opening up a brand new drawing, we're going to set ourselves up to draw a basic three-dimensional flat, 4 by 8 flat. We're going to start by making some custom changes. We'll make our layer 1 in scale. Okay, there we go. We're going to add some classes by the following flats hyphen framing. We'll change the pattern. that one. This is the fourth one in and fourth one down. Okay, another flat, another class, flats, hyphen, straps, corner, locks, enter. Create something here as well, but we're going to choose a different one. I can move this over so I can see the old fill that I used there. Pattern. I'm going to choose something in the other direction so it has some contrast to it. Let's go with this one down here, second one over, and several down. Another new layer uh, class, flats, hyphen. Simple outline shape. This is going to make our lives easier as we draw our flat. And this doesn't need uh, any kind of fill. In fact, we're going to make it fill of none. Click OK. We're going to make some other changes as well. We're going to change our grid, smart cursor settings. Our grid is set at 1 8th of an inch, and so we certainly don't need that type of uh, detail capability. So we're going to change that to 3 inches and make our grid, our visible grid, 6 inches. We're going to make sure that all of our snaps are turned on which they are. We're going to fit the page, give ourselves a little better work area. We're going to change our, oh, one detail. We're going to change our layer name to flat 3D. Flat 3D. We're going to take our rectangle tool. Oh, we're going to change our class to our simple outline shape. Turn this out a little bit so we can see them all. We're going to be using that a few times. Draw a simple 4 by 8 shape. We'll snap to our grid, pull over, pull over 4 feet and up 8. We could type it in, but we're going to just draw it. I'm going to change our class to framing. We're going to use our double line tool, change this width to two and a half. Mine is already set there. Okay. We'll change this choice to the one on the left, which is the top control line. We're going to draw our top rail, draw our bottom rail, and continue and draw our styles. Now we go up and we change our choices, our options to the center for our double line tool. And we're going to find the center of our flat, which is right there. We click on the snap to center. And there we have our one, two, three, four, five pieces here. We're going to create our diagonal brace as well. Zoom in a little bit on the bottom. We start at the center, pull up at a 45 degree angle. Press tab twice, type in 45, return, make this a little bit longer, 
click there, and now we're going to do a little bit of editing here. We'll choose our 2D selection tool, double click our object, make this a little bit shorter to there. Bring this down, straight down. The snaps are wonderful in the program. We keep our lines nice and straight. Pull it straight down here. Zoom in a little bit more. Make sure that we're following that line. Come back up here and pull it down. There we go. Nice straight line. You'll notice that it says minus 135 degrees. That means it's the opposite of the 45. We're going to bring this one up to there. Fit to page. There are six parts. I'm going to select all the parts. We can press shift and select all of our framing members. We do not want the, that simple shape that we had earlier. Over here in the object info palette we have six polygons, but they're all flat. These are not one by threes yet. I hit Command E for extrude. We're going to extrude these to 0.75 or three quarters of an inch. And now that I've done that, notice over here in the object info palette that it says it's a single extrude. When you extrude a bunch of items together, it forms a group of items. And for this demonstration, I want to ungroup these items. So modify and clicking ungroup, or I could hit Command U or Control U. But now I've ungrouped them. And taking a look up here in the corner, now I have six extruded items. They are all extruded to three quarters of an inch. But now we have six individual items instead of one solid item. Let's take a look what we have. Here's our isometric view of our unit. Of our flat laying on the floor. Let's change our class now to the simple outline shape and we want to draw our corner blocks and there's a reason that I'm changing this to here. I'm going to turn off snap mod, and modify others to just show and snap others. Now that I'm in this class here and I've limited it to show and snap others, I can now select the outer frame. If this is set to show snap modify others, when I'm wandering around, it's more difficult to find my frame because these 1x3s are sitting atop it. So I change this to show snap others. Now the only thing in this class that's snappable, that's choosable or selectable, is that frame that I wanted. Now we're going to use a new tool. This is the offset tool. I click on there. I have my distance set at 3 quarters of an inch. And I click inside my rectangle. And now I have my guideline for my corner blocks. Remember that corner blocks and straps go three quarters of an inch in from the edge. I'm going to change my class to straps and corner blocks. I'm going to draw a corner block right here in the corner using this as a guide. We're going to use the polyline tool. I'm going to start from the middle. Uh, I'm going to start from the corner. Pull down nine inches. Click. I'm going to go up 45 degrees, as you can see by my data bar. Click there and pull back to my origin. I'm going to extrude this now. This one is 0.25 because it's a piece of quarter inch plywood. I'm going to zoom out a little ways. Now for clarity, I'm going to turn off this layer that I had earlier, this simple outline shape. I have my corner block chosen. I'm going to use the mirror tool. I'm going to confirm that it is on duplicate and mirror mode instead of mirror mode, which would make the first triangle disappear. Duplicate and mirror mode. Find the center of the flat here. Hold down. Choose the first flat, uh, the first corner block. So I have both of them chosen. Move my window down a little bit, mirror tool, center of the flat, draw over. So we have, we have four corner blocks. We're going to turn that guide rectangle back on again for the straps.
Now a strap is a piece of plywood that is a simple rectangle. We're going to draw a rectangle that is two and a half, sorry, 2.25, two and a quarter by nine inches. And I've drawn it in the wrong direction, so I'm going to hit Command L to rotate it. Select it by its center point here. I'm going to move it to the center of my board. Find the center point. There it is. Now I'm going to move it straight over so that it lines up to my guideline. Now I can mirror tool it again. Actually, I'm going to extrude it first. Now I've extruded it. Now I can mirror tool it to the other side. I'm going to take this one and make a copy of it. I'm going to use this one down here for our diagonal. I'll change its rotation to 45 degrees. I'll rotate. Come down to 135 or minus 135. Click. Move it right to the center of my object here. I want to move this corner 45 degrees up to my guideline. There it is. Now I need to modify this. I need to slice that off. So I'm going to take the slice tool. Make sure that it's at the correct choice up here, which is the right one. I want to trim by line. Click my corner. Pull down. Now, this is an interesting point. See how it's not going to edit anything else? Nothing else is lighting up. In the past, we've lit up, lit up other objects, but because the classes are in Show and Snap Others, and we're, we have this object all by itself in our class of straps corner blocks, all we're going to do is trim this item, and we don't have to worry about the other ones. Normally, we would be holding down the Option key or the Alt key. I'm going to keep this side, and there is my modified strap. Mirror tool to the center of this board, perpendicular to the board, and there's the other side. Let's turn off the simple outline again. Fit to page and take a look at our flat. Let's take a look at some different views of our flat. Now let's take a look at a side view, and we're going to discover that our corner blocks are inside the 1x3. We're not certainly not going to route out notches for these corner blocks, so we need to move them to the back of the one of the flat. Now remember, when we were drawing our flat, we draw it, we drew it in top view. That means that our flat is lying flat on the floor, and all of our objects that we drew. The origin line, the height, is flat on the floor. So to tell which is the front and which is the back, these corner blocks must be resting on the floor, just like the 1x3s. And since the corner blocks are thinner, we can tell that down here must be where the floor is. And since it's lying down, this must be the back of the flat. So the first thing we're going to do is choose all of our items in this particular class. We're in Show and Snap Others. We don't, we don't have to worry about selecting the wrong things. I'm going to zoom in and simply move our objects down by that quarter of an inch, straight down, and we'll let go. Let's see what we have. Now they're all on the surface on the rear of the flat, or on the floor of the flat. But we still need to stand our flat up. Now these parts here, if we rotate just these items using the rotate tool to stand it up, we could grab this here over like so and stand it up but now it's left the one by threes on the floor so we don't want to do that I'm going to back out of this control Z a few times I'm going to turn on show snap modify others 
Now it won't modify classes that are invisible. It's only going to modify the stuff that's visible right now. So I'm going to select all, and it selects the one by three at the same time. I'm going to zoom in and grab the bottom of our flat. And now I'll tip it up. And let's take a look what we have. We have flat, isometric view, rear isometric view. Let's hit some views over here. Let's do a shaded view. We'll unchoose it so we can see some patterning. And now our flat is complete. This is what it looks like. Let's center it on our page. Choose the flyover tool. I'm going to put the flyover tool marker right at the base of the flat so we have a reference on where to fly around from. And there is our 3D flat uncovered.